Hello guys and gals and welcome! So we have another episode of uh, Barbarian I Choose You! That's right, today is the Barbarian episode and we're going to be talking about the Barbarian as a starter ladder character. Now when you start a ladder character there are some obvious, some very obvious problems. Um, one most notably is equipment. You obviously have no equipment, you've got no gold, you've got nothing really to your name whatsoever and nobody does. We're all peasants and, uh, and Kane is probably richer than all of us charging 100 gold per uh, identify. Now <laughs> The, um, the character of the Barbarian um, is unfortunately one of the characters that is highly equipment-based. And you always have to ask yourself this question when you're thinking about a ladder starter character. Is my character going to be a highly equipment-based character? And the answer to that question is yes. Unfortunately, the Barbarian is one of those characters that tends to be an extremely equipment based character um, almost exclusively based around their weapon um, the armor doesn't matter too much because they do actually have quite a few ways to increase their defenses uh, with iron skin uh, they also have the shout ability uh, they have the uh, battle orders which increases their life and mana and they also have battle command which increases their skills and these can come in extremely handy um, to obviously keep yourself alive but um, when it comes to damage output, generally you have to have some form of weapon that can actually do the job. And uh, unlike a sorceress who can just put a couple points into a skill and deal pretty massive amounts of damage, or a necromancer who can summon an army of the undead, the barbarian is left in a very awkward position where they are forced into uh, you know, having good equipment. And this can be a detriment if you are building a Barbarian as your first ladder character. Um, now, keep in mind that the Barbarian does have some very interesting abilities which could help you on your journey. Uh, so, for instance, um, you can, of course, build into uh, Howl, which a lot of people underestimate early on. Howl is an extremely easy ability to keep monsters away from you and to help you survive. Um, it can be used as a uh, stopgap measure anytime that you are in trouble. So if you are in the pack, uh, in the middle of a pack of monsters and you feel like at some point you're just not doing very well, you can very easily start to Howl and, uh, and cause all the monsters to run away. And a couple points in Howl is actually more than enough because as you can see, even with only level 9 Howl, uh, they are running away for 46 yards for a duration of, uh, sorry, 42.6 yards for a duration of 11 seconds. And um, a lot of people don't really think much of Howl, but to be honest with you, Howl is just one of those abilities that can be absolutely tremendously useful in a situation where you're just not strong enough to dish out the damage that you would otherwise normally be able to dish out. Um, it can also be used to very effectively farm bosses. Uh, like, for instance, I can howl right here in the middle of uh, Shank, and I can cause all these monsters to clear the field, and then I can have some fun killing Shank by himself. Um, now, howl is relatively low level, which means that you can get access to it really early on, and you can use that to help yourself out. And, of course, later on in the game, once you've uh, leveled up your character a bit, and, uh, you know, you have... You have, uh, you know, the correct weapons, the correct gear, and you've moved on. Of course, you're probably going to respec and take your points out of Howl. But don't uh, take them out of them just yet, because let me tell you another thing about Howl that a lot of people don't know. Uh, Howl is extremely useful in the Ubers. So when you are doing the Uber runs and you're trying to fight Lilith, when you're trying to fight uh, Uber Mephisto, Uber Bale, Pandemonium Diablo... Um, the minions that, uh, that the Ubers spawn in Uber Tristram are going to be constant and never-ending, but they are not bosses. And so you can just simply tap Howl every now and then and cause all those monsters to run away. Think about that. Now, Barbarian also has another interesting ability that, uh, that nobody else in the game has, and that is Find Potion and Find Item. Um, Fine Potion now has a synergy with Grim Ward, which increases the damage that it outputs. Um, so if you are uh, using Grim Ward near a bunch of monsters, uh, they take more damage for the Grim Ward being active, which is pretty darn awesome. Um, and this actually comes in as a really nice group utility skill. Uh, but Find Item specifically is a very interesting way that Barbarians can uh, try to offset the fact that they do not have a massive amount of equipment. So especially early on when Barbarians are 
unfortunately very undergeared. Um, you can put on a little bit of magic find gear, whatever you can find, whether it's chip topaz armor or maybe you got lucky and found yourself a tarn helm and a gull dagger. Whatever it may be, you can use that and you can start horking. That's, that's what, what we affectionately call it. You can start horking items. And, uh, and find item works extremely well, but of course the monster still has to die for you to hork them. Um, when you hork a super unique, by the way, uh, the super unique will drop two items because that's what super uniques always drop. They're uh, guaranteed two item droppers. Now, as a group utility character, the Barbarian works exceedingly well. Uh, shout, Battle Orders, and Battle Command are all exceedingly useful in, uh, in a group scenario. Um, like I said, Howl can also be very good to save people's lives. Uh, Leap is also absolutely amazing in a group scenario. And uh, let me go ahead and show you this real quick, what Max Leap can do. Because I do feel like it needs a little bit of a, uh, a showcase for you guys to really understand the kind of the ridiculousness <laughs> that Leap has. So um, I know Leap doesn't actually kill anything, but uh, but I still want you to see this. So uh, let's go into... Um, let's go somewhere where there's a lot of uh, evil monsters. Let's go to the Traven Call. How about that? Um, they have fixed Leap, by the way. Um, it is much faster than it was before. This is this is the public test realm server, so I want you to uh, to note that. And uh, I want you to see what you can do with Leap. Notice how none of these monsters are capable of doing anything. So as a group utility skill, Leap actually comes in as a really amazing group utility skill. Um, you can have a barbarian in your group who maybe just simply builds Leap and battle orders and battle commands and shouts. And basically the entire purpose of this barbarian would be to buff up your group and to leap around, causing all the monsters to be relatively uh, useless, which is pretty amazing. Um, combined by the fact that uh, now we have some other interesting options that you can take for Barbarian. Um, they have beefed up the amount of damage that Double Swing is capable of uh, dishing out now. So if you, oh, sorry, Double Throw. So if you put uh, maximum points into Double Throw, you will notice that it has a nice 256% damage bonus on it, which it did not have before. And you can beef that up even further by beefing up Double Swing to a total of 408% damage bonus. Um, you can also bring up Throwing Mastery, which is going to increase from 30, uh, sorry, a 49% pierce chance, which is absolutely amazing because Throwing Mastery never had pierce chance before. Um, there are a lot of interesting things going on with Barbarian that have changed in the recent patches, including an increase in the duration of Frenzy. As you can see here, Frenzy has a maximum duration of 6.4 seconds. Uh, but if I go over to Increased Stamina, Increased Stamina actually has a synergy now that increases the duration of Frenzy by 0.4 seconds per level, which means if we max out Fre the Increased Stamina, we can go up to a total of 14 seconds on our duration for Frenzy, which is kind of nuts. Uh, that's literally more than double the duration, which means we're going to be able to run around like Sanic to Hooge Hag even faster than we were before and even longer than we were before. Um... <laughs> Now, we do have uh, some other interesting changes, uh, like, for instance, Berserk. It got a very nice change from Shout to Battle Orders. So if you do plan on building a Berserk Barbarian, even if it's just as a secondary skill, um, it does get a very nice bonus from Battle Orders now instead of from Shout. It never really made much sense for it to get the uh, synergy from Shout, and uh, I'm glad that they changed that. Um, we also have Warcry, which got some nice buffs recently. And, uh, and Warcry Barbarians, or rather a Singer Barbarian, is a very interesting uh, mechanic. And uh, let's see if we can show off Singer Barbs real quick. Because it is something fun that you can play around with. Basically, it functions kind of like a Nova skill. Um, it does work off of FCR, if I remember correctly. And it is a nice little AoE. It does cost a lot of mana, though, from what I remember. And um, there are characters who have built their entire build around Warcry and, uh, and its abilities. And uh, as you can see right now, it's not really that amazing. I do have to beef up all the synergies to get this to max. So let me uh, do that real quick. So we need Howl to max. 
uh, which we were talking about earlier. We need Taunt to max, and we also need Battle Cry to maximum. So that's quite an investment of skill points there, but now we are at 1,334 to 1,380 on our AoE damage. And I'm out of mana again. Let me go grab some potions, shall I? That would probably be a smart idea. Uh, but while I'm doing this, let's talk really quickly about Barbarian as a starter character, right? So Barbarians are very interesting starter characters because, number one, they fit well into a group. Um, I have found that on a regular basis, um, having a Barbarian in a group is definitely a lot better than not having a Barbarian in a group. And, uh, and just in general, uh, the battle orders can have a huge benefit to the entire group. Um, not just in form of the um, extra life, but the plus the skills, the extra defense, um, as well as the other mechanics that they can bring to the table. Like, for instance, um, the other mechanics they can bring to the table, like, for instance, the, uh, the Howl, the Grim Ward, the Find Item. Um, you can basically use your Barbarians as a, uh, a buff stick for the group. Um, think about it like this. Um, your Barbarian will build a uh, Find Item, um, he will probably build maybe even Grim Ward because Grim Ward's pretty OP at this point uh, with, with, what is it, 120% enemy damage taken bonus on it, um, which is going to be pretty massive. It also slows enemies down at this point as well. So you could theoretically do Find Item of uh, Grim Ward. You could do the Shouts, obviously, so Shout, Battle Orders, and Battle Command. And, um, and if you did these right here, just these, honestly, that would be pretty great. And then you could also potentially build into Leap for the knockback effect. Um, and your Barbarian could be buffing the group, knocking back the monsters, keeping them away, and also finding items. And you would stack a Magic Find on him, of course, as much Magic Find as you could, so that he could hork as many good items for the group as possible. And hopefully good items for himself, so eventually he could swap out of the horking Barbarian mode. Um, when you're playing a group, sometimes you do have to sacrifice. And, uh, and that literally is what it is you know it, when you're playing a character like this who can provide such a massive benefit to the group i mean why not i would even dare say that every single ladder group should probably have a barbarian running shouts in it uh, because a barbarian running shouts is just an amazing thing for the group um, not only uh, for the players, but also for the mercenaries, uh, for the necromancer's army, uh, you know, for the golem. All of it, everything is going to get better because of these shouts. And the higher that the shouts get, the, um, the more defense that they apply, the more uh, health and mana that they give you, the more um, plus the skills and d the duration of the plus the skills that they give you um, is definitely going to be very, very nice. Um, in fact, the duration is probably the biggest thing here because once you get up to a certain level, um, as you can see, they last about 500 seconds um, at level 28, and they can get even higher than that, and that's a, that's a really nice duration. Uh, so what else is there to say about the Barbarian? Um, playing a Barbarian as a solo cell phone character uh, may be kind of difficult. Um, I'm not going to lie when I say that um, the Barbarian's equipment needs are rather high. Um, your Barbarian is going to need some very nice equipment in the form of um, uh, damage, basically damaging equipment. The weapon is probably the most important thing for the Barbarian, uh, pretty much bar none. They do have natural resistance as a skill, which can help them overcome a lack of resistances. Um, and they do have the iron skin, which can help them overcome a lack of defense. But they don't really have the ability to overcome a very poor weapon choice. Um, and I've often found myself, when playing a Barbarian, um, in a position where I would like to continue to the next tier or like to continue to the next zone, but I just really don't have the weapon to be able to to get there um, and uh, and eventually you're going to come across a situation where your damage is physical only and uh, and you just really don't have the capability of killing things um, there are a couple ways around this by the way you can build berserk which does 100 percent magic damage uh, but do be aware that berserk is a skill that does not steal life um, not even from life tab so if you do build berserk you're probably going to want to build something else as well 
Um, you can also build other skills like Frenzy, which will help you run really, really fast. And quite honestly, Frenzy's uh, increased speed is actually so good that you can literally run almost faster than a sorceress can teleport. I'm not sure if that's still true now that we have the wide screen, because uh, the wide screen has sped up the teleport of the sorceresses a little bit more than it was before. Uh, but now that um, we have wide screen, it's probably more of a competition. Uh, we also have some other interesting abilities like the uh, the throwing now, uh, and of course we always have the uh, the old standby whirlwind, and um, and leap attack has seen quite a big buff in damage, although it's not uh, it's not quite enough in my opinion. Um, I do think that Barbarian can make a very good starter character if you know what you're doing with the class, but I also feel like at the same time that the Barbarian can be an extremely challenging choice. Um, I do know some people who have specifically said that they want to try and start with a Warcry Barbarian, uh, which is going to be very interesting. Um, as a Warcry Barbarian, you do have access to, obviously, max level Taunt and max level Howl. Uh, and Taunt is a very interesting ability, which can cause monsters to run away, you know, ch charge you. And Howl is a skill that causes monsters to run away. And just to give you a really silly idea of, uh, of what you can do with the ability to make monsters run away and and the ability to make monsters come closer. Uh, let me see if I can uh, I can set this up and show you how this might work. So uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, put these two on binds, and uh, and I'm going to make you guys laugh here. Hold on. <laughs> see this poor guy. <laughs> stuck in an infinite loop of running away and and uh, coming back you can do this really silly thing with uh, with taunt and uh, and howl and you can literally make a monster run away come back 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 I think it's hilarious um, you can actually do this with uh, with some other items as well so um, there's a new item in the game that has taunt on it. It's a rune word. And uh, you could potentially put on uh, hit causes monster flea equipment with the taunt rune word. And it would cause the monsters to constantly rubber band back and forth between you. Because as the taunt hits, they're going to run back towards you. And as the hit causes monster to flea hits, they're going to run away. Um, it might even be interesting to uh, build a an Amazon around this effect where literally you have a Amazon who is uh, firing hit causes monster to flee equipment. Maybe she's using the face of horror combined with the, uh, the rattle cage, which would give her 90% hit causes monster to flee and then have a barbarian merc with the, uh, <laughs> with the, 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 the taunt sword so that the monsters are constantly coming back and running away and coming back and running away just for the laughs of it. A uh, little, little yo-yo practice. Um, all in all, I do think the Barbarian can make a solid member of a group. Um, if you choose a Barbarian for a group, you're going to be a very, very useful member of the group. But uh, you are also probably going to not be able to kill a lot of things. I have noticed in my time playing with Barbarians in groups, I've done several ladders and I've also done several groups, including a mock ladder. And generally the Barbarian tends to be the one who is kind of left behind as far as damage is concerned. Now that does not mean he's not useful. The Barbarian Shouts, the Barbarian's Leap Ability, the Barbarian's Find Item, and all these things are highly useful to the group. And when the Barbarian horks a High Lord's Wrath off of a random monster or a Jaw Rune or something like that, you guys are all going to be dancing up and down. And uh, trust me, you will be. Uh, because uh, early ladder, those items are worth a ton, and uh, and being able to use those for your group is, uh, is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm also really interested in this Grim Ward. Um, I know that right now I think it's bugged, and I'm hoping that they fix it before ladder starts, obviously. Uh, but the 120% uh, damage taken from enemies that you can potentially get uh, from Grim Ward is very, very interesting. Uh, let me go ahead and reset my points real quick. I want to show you guys this. So if you beef up Grim Ward to maximum, it still does uh, enemy damage taken 25%. And then if you beef up Find Potion, uh, it goes to enemy damage taken plus 120%, uh, which is a pretty massive bonus. Um, and um, basically what Grim Ward does is it allows you to uh, put a totem on the ground, which will potentially uh, cause a ton of trouble for everybody. Just go ahead and put some points in here real quick. A ton of trouble for everybody. 
Uh, you know, let's go somewhere where we have lots of monsters. Uh, Canyon of the Magi is a great place. There's always like just way too many monsters for its uh, for its own good here. Oh Lord, might want to actually get some health. I didn't put any points into vitality. I only have 260 health. There we go. A couple points in health, boys. A couple points in health. It does help. It does indeed help. Not gonna lie. Hey, hey, I need my corpse. Gim. No. I will. No. Y'all suck. Y'all some suckin' suckins. <laughs> this character is running full IK, and he didn't. He didn't even have any points in health. I feel bad for him. I, I didn't put any points into his vitality. He was literally only at 260 health, and uh, and he obviously didn't have his shouts. There we go. There we go. Let's give him an attack, too. You know what? That might actually be nice. I'll give him some Mace Mastery and a point there and a point there. And you know what? You can just bash things to death. Here you go. Level 30 bash. Revenge of the Revenge of the IK bar. So when you cast Grim Ward, it makes this very interesting totem on the ground. And uh, upon making the totem, you'll notice that the only monsters that don't run away are the elites. It slows them down tremendously. I mean, look at how ridiculously slow they are. Um, they get a very, very nice 67% enemy slow. It's very similar to the way that Holy Freeze works. Um, they also get a damage enemy damage bonus of 120% damage taken. Now, right now, as far as I know, it is not working. I remember them saying something about uh, that Grimoire was kind of bugged at the moment, and it was not functioning as it should. Um, but, uh, but in the future, I'm sure that they will get it fixed. And, uh, and honestly, the slow by itself is pretty amazing. Um, and there's no limit to how many of these you can summon, of course. You can just summon as many as you want. And when you are up against a wall, let me see if I can show you this as well. So if you are near a wall, the monsters will just run into the wall. Uh, let's go over here next to this wall, and I'll make one particular grimoire. It'd be nice if I could hit something. And uh, let's make sure they're on this side of the Grimward, because you need strategic placement. And you place the Grimward, and you will notice that they run directly into the wall, and they just stand there. And they're easy pickings. You can then pick them off, kill them at your leisure. Um, if you're a sorceress, if you're an Amazon, if you're any kind of character that has ranged abilities, um, this kind of thing is absolutely awesome and can be just a massive game changer in terms of uh, uh, clear speed. Um, granted, sometimes you want them to group up, and that's why I'm saying you need uh, strategic placement of the Grimwards. You don't just want to place them willy-nilly. Uh, let's see what else we can talk about here. Uh, there's the Barbarian is a rather simple character. You know, they, they like to do damage, and, uh, and damage is important to them. And uh, I'm going to leap away from you guys. Now, of course, you can also use leap for that same purpose, to hold them back. Uh, now that it is faster than ever... As you can see, it tends to work really, really nicely. I know you heard that sticky keys turn on. Ate that thing. I literally go into the options of sticky keys, and I will literally turn sticky keys off and say, never, ever, ever bother with this, me with this again, and it will still come back every single time. All you got to do is hit the shift key five times fast, and it will automatically uh, pop up. Now, as far as equipment goes, um, there are a lot of early game options that you can choose from. You're definitely going to need some faster hit recovery to help you uh, avoid those faster hit recovery stun locks. Um, early on, you might even want to avoid using a shield. A lot of characters actually do this because barbarians tend to have pretty horrible uh, faster blocking. And, uh, just, just in general, they just don't do well with a shield early on. Once you get a nice shield that has faster blocking and increased chance of blocking and stuff like that on it, it tends to work out better um, if you want to go with a shield. Um, the good thing about Barbarian is that some of the items are very specific to Barbarian. So when you're leveling up with a Sorceress, a Paladin, a Necromancer, an Assassin, things like that, and something like an IK Maul drops, 
even though it's maybe not be the best item in the world, it can certainly help you out. Um, these items are generally going to be poo-pooed on by the rest of your group. So when you think about Barbarian, think about the fact that pretty much all the helmets, the Barbarian-only helmets, are going to go to you. Um, all the two-handed weapons that nobody wants are going to go to you. Um, so if it's not a polearm specifically that could potentially be used on a mercenary, uh, there's a very good chance it's going to go to you. Um, and, uh, and, and that's because most characters in the game just don't tend to use two-handed weapons. Um, the only other exception to this rule tends to be the uh, werewolf and uh, bear druids. Uh, werewolf and bear druids do tend to use two-handed weapons. But it kind of, uh, again, it kind of depends specifically on the stats that are on those weapons. So you will have a really nice choice of the weapons that drop. So when a very good uh, two-handed weapon falls, uh, that is going to be a very good choice for you. And that might be what you want to do. You might actually want to go with a two-handed style weapon for your Barbarian, specifically because if there are any other characters in your game, like for instance a, uh, a Paladin who would be looking for one-handed weapons normally, because they always want to use a shield. Um, you know, if you have a uh, Amazon, they're going to be looking for spears, and they're going to be looking for javelins. If you have a, um, a Druid, they tend to be looking for uh, weapons that have a very high increased attack speed on them, uh, which a lot of the times uh, you don't necessarily need, depending on the build that you're running on your Barbarian. Um, so you can take advantage of these things. You can take advantage of the fact that there are items that will be tossed to the wayside, essentially, um, that you can utilize to good extent. Um, there are also quite a few items in the game that, um, that won't be useful to most players. Um, you know, because like, for instance, if you have a team that is primarily built of sorceresses or, or caster types like tornado druids and, and things like that, um, there are a lot of melee items in general, which will be kind of pushed your way. And, uh, and eventually if you are in a group, you will find yourself doing very well as far as equipment is concerned. Um, IK set in general, um, although it is poo pooed on because it is not exactly the best set in the game. <coughs> It does actually have uh, quite a nice usage case scenario uh, for a, uh, a lower level barbarian. As you pick up the pieces, I believe this is the lowest level piece, although this, is, this has been upgraded, by the way. Um, if you haven't seen my upgraded IK set video, uh, this is, this is the, uh, the end result. Um, a lot of these pieces can be gotten for relatively cheap early on in the ladder. You can trade for an IK mall, you can trade for IK gloves, IK belt, IK boots, and IK helmet relatively inexpensively. And uh, an IK armor is a little bit rare, uh, so you may have to, to fight somebody for that. And then eventually, when you get yourself some better equipment later on in the ladder, you can take off the IK set and put on something uh, more worthwhile. It's, uh, it's completely up to you. But uh, IK set is definitely a solid set that you can build toward early on in the ladder, and then move off of later on. I think I've talked enough about the Barbarian, uh, but let's go over really quickly one more time uh, what the Barbarian is good at and what he's not. So um, he's not going to, he doesn't tend to be very good at uh, damage early on in the ladder. Because he is highly equipment based, you are going to find that your, your progress on your Barbarian is going to be tied specifically to the equipment that you can get. So if you or in a group and your group is pooling together equipment for you, you may find that your Barbarian will excel. If you do very badly, if your group doesn't find any good items for you, or if you're solo cell found and all you seem to be finding is caster equipment, um, you're probably not going to do very well. Uh, the Barbarian, unfortunately, is just one of those characters that is tied very heavily to the equipment that he finds. Now, there are some low-level rune words um, and various items that, uh, that can help you in this regard. And I have tons of videos up. Uh, there is one video in specifically where I literally go over every single low-level rune word in the game. And I talk about each particular one and their use case scenarios. And uh, a lot of those low-level rune words can come in really handy for a low-level Barbarian. So you might want to consider taking a look at that video. Um, not really sure I would specifically choose a Barbarian as my starter character. Uh, but that's not because I don't, uh, I don't think Barbarian would make a good starter character. It is specifically just because I think I like playing Necromancer better. <laughs> um, I still haven't quite chosen exactly what starter character I want to play with this ladder. Uh, last ladder, I chose a Necromancer. Um, 
And then the latter uh, before that was a paladin, I want to say. Yeah, it was a conviction paladin. Um, and, uh, and that is for a different video entirely. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and I hope this video has given you a little insight into, uh, into Barbarian as a choice for a ladder starter character. And, uh, and as always, keep watching.